All right, it's time for part two of my quantum mechanics themed science behind the magic episode. So part one, I posted about a month ago. I'll have that in the cards. It is probably advantageous to watch that before this one, although I don't think you are required to, to understand what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, in that one, I talk about more what we know and the science behind some parts of quantum mechanics, why I love it, why I love it when it's in books that I love. In this one, I'm gonna talk about some theories and things that we know exist or we theorize exist and cannot prove or cannot tell you why it happens. So some real magic, really, honestly. And I wanna explain these things, hopefully, to the best of my ability and point out what books I have seen them in lately. And I'm actually, I know originally I said maybe I'd do three part quantum. I'm gonna just do a two part quantum. And I'm gonna talk about quantum entanglement and the many worlds theories in this one. So starting off with quantum entanglement. This is when you have particles, so we'll say electrons, that are entangled. Um, the nature of how they become entangled, we can do empirically, but we don't really understand what's happening. But because they're entangled, no matter how far apart they are, information passes between these two particles. And what I mean by that is, you might remember from an introductory physics class, we have conservation of momentum. So little particles have a momentum type quality to them. We refer to it kind of as spin. So something can have a spin up or a spin down. That's all we're gonna talk about here because spin itself is very confusing. But if you have these two entangled particles, if one particle suddenly spins up, the other one has to spin down and it happens instantaneously, faster than the speed of light across very large distances. Which is why Albert Einstein calls this spooky action at a distance. He, um, you might not know this, but Albert Einstein does not like quantum mechanics. He finds it messy. He does not like that we use different rules for small particles than we do big things. Um, he came up with general relativity and special relativity, which although wonderful models do not work in quantum space. And I think he spent the majority of the end of his life trying to figure out the math to make it all work. Because most scientists in the physics field want a unifying theory, but we still kind of just have like two theories. <laughs> that work in different situations. Now, where do we find quantum entanglement in our books? Well, we're gonna start with Middle Game by Sean and McGuire. This is a story about these two children who are separated at birth, who have different facets of what is called the doctrine. One is very good with words, one is very good with math. Put them together, they're basically God. Like, that's the idea. And we go through the story of these two people trying to find valuable relationships, trying to understand themselves, trying to prevent being taken into the hands of someone who would abuse their powers. That's kind of the flow of that story. But the quantum entanglement are the two main characters. Roger and Darger are essentially two particles that are entangled. And the way this comes through is they have a telepathy way of communicating with each other, and they can instantly tell when the other one has something happening to them that is extreme. Um, like being hurt or etc. Things like that. And so they are entangled. They are essentially macro versions of quantum entanglement. It's a very good story. If you're okay with weird, not explained alchemy, sci-fi fantasy stuff. I was good with it, but I was obsessed with Roger and Dodger's relationship. Another place you will find quantum entanglement is shocking, I know, but the Starlight Archive. And this is, there are this is just a small world building thing, but there are these things called fabrials, and these fabrials can be entangled. And when they are, you can use them to make what is called a span read. These are essentially tablets that they can get instant messaging on to each other, but they don't have Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. So what they have are each span read has the, one of the particles, and then you have a quill for each of them. And while someone is writing, the other quill will write at the same time as the other person because of the entanglement, that transfer of data instantaneously across large distances. So it's really cool. And it's something that we do in our real world try to figure out how can we take advantage of this phenomenon. It does make really good unhackable decryption. Like if you try to hack it, because of what we talked about in my last video, it collapses, it's no longer entangled, it doesn't work anymore. So you can't hack the systems without getting rid of the message, which is also part of its flaws, because as we're gonna talk about in this next section, it can be easy for things to stop being entangled so then you can't take advantage of that effect because it's not there anymore. 
but I find it very fascinating. And I will have linked down below an MIT link to quantum computing that actually goes through a lot of the terms I'm bringing up and in relationship to quantum computers, because that is probably the way we are most actively using quantum mechanics for applied sciences. Now, let's get into the many worlds theory. This is a theory that there are many universes, many parallel universes, a universe for every decision you've ever made. And this is from the idea of, we talked about in the last video, a wave function is all possibilities until you look at it. When you measure something, you suddenly make it collapse to one form. So on a small scale, an electron can exist in that whole electron cloud thing we saw growing up until you looked at it, and then you know exactly where it is, and it can't be in any other location anymore. Its wave function collapses. And I discussed that in terms of one facet of the Cosmere, but also uh, Rachel told me this from Reads with Rachel, and I totally forgot. If you've ever watched Doctor Who, The Weeping Angels, which like, I'll probably put an image here, but if you've watched Doctor Who, I'm very nervous about putting an image here, but... <laughs> It's a very inside Doctor Who joke. But weeping angels are also a big example of uh, wave function collapse because if you're looking at them, they are only in that fixed state. And when you're not looking at them, they can move. They're so creepy. I, they're the most horrifying monsters ever. Well, maybe not the most, but they are They're up there. Now, the idea with the many worlds theory, though, is that not all wave functions collapse completely. There is quantum decoherence, so something stops having wave-like properties, they are no longer in a wave function, and they're also not collapsing. So that's why we can, the universe is a wave function with many possibilities. So that's kind of the idea there, so just run with it. And now some books I've read recently that take advantage of this. First one I'll talk about is Finna. This is one I actually just read. The premise is you're in an Ikea, or it's not actually Ikea, they picked a different Swedish name. I think Swedish. I don't know. Imagine an Ikea if you're in the States. I assume actually Ikea is many places in the world, but you know, really big complex store with lots of furniture, lots of themed rooms, and suddenly there are wormholes that open up portals to other worlds. And there's, you know, the idea also that there's not only other worlds, there are other yous in other worlds. And, you know, there's a chance to have a different version of you doing a different thing. Every permutation is viable. And that is a big part of this plot as they are trying to maneuver through these worlds to find a thing. Finna also goes into quantum entanglement, but in a way that is much looser and less tied to what we actually know about quantum entanglement, which is why I didn't go over it in depth in that section. But Finna is a great use of quantum mechanics in a very short novella space, and it was really a fun, it's a fun, it was a fun ride. And the next one I'll talk about is Exhalation by Ted Chang. The short story in specific is, oh gosh, I can't remember, so I'll put the name here. It's like anxiety something. But the premise here is you can make a prism that will connect you to a parallel ver universe version of you that made a different decision. So you can activate a prism, like say, you're trying to think about a job you should take or not. And you're like, well, I want to know what would have happened if I didn't take the job. So I'm going to activate this prism the moment I decide to take the job. So the other universe you will be the person who didn't take the job, and then you get to see the diverging paths from there. And there are many prisms, and then you get access to many universes. Because not only are you different in that universe, there are many other people and weather patterns and world events. Everything's very different. It's a very, very good novella, short story, novelette, I don't know. It's in Exhalation by Ted Chang, which you all know I adore. I adore a lot of the sci-fi he uses, and I do have a review for that if you really, really need more of an excuse of why to pick this one up. It's so good. And the last one I'll mention is Midnight Robber by Nayla Hopkinson. This is also a book that takes um, advantage of the many worlds theories. You have, I can't really remember the name of this planet, but you have a planet that's been colonized, and there is a way to get to a different version, an older low-tech version. Maybe not older, but it's a more low-tech version of this planet, the new halfway tree. And that's where you go when you get in trouble. Like when you get in trouble in the high tech world, you get basically deported to this low tech world. And there are also many other worlds and we know that, but this takes advantage of how there is this parallel universe on this planet. It is more low tech. And yeah, it's, I really like that story. I'm probably gonna make a review for it. It is not for everyone. I highly suggest looking at trigger warnings for this one. Uh, she, she does not hold back her punches. <laughs> And so, yeah, that was me just having fun, 
showing you some cool things in quantum mechanics in books. And hopefully that link down below and what I've talked about will help you appreciate quantum mechanics when it's given to you in other sci-fi and fantasy media you come across. And if you've made it this far, I want you to put down an emoji of a star. I don't know why, it's what I said. <laughs> and other than that, like if you like it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.